words of Rabindranath Tagore from Gitanjali, where the mind is without fear and the head is held high, where knowledge is free, where the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls, where words come out of the depth of truth, where tireless striving stretches its arms towards perfection, where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way into the dreary desert sand of dead habit, where the mind is led forward by thee into ever widening thought and action, into that heaven, my father, let my country awake. Good afternoon, dear students, parents, staff, faculty, support staff, and all that have joined us today to celebrate our happy Independence Day. It is truly happy, despite all that we are going through in the world, we are free. And we have to honor that freedom. And that honor comes on our tricolor on our tiranga, the symbol of our free country, where the saffron represents strength, courage, and sacrifice, white, peace, unity, and truth, green, faith, fertility, growth, and auspiciousness of our land. It has been flying high with the chakra at the center, with the 24 spokes that denote life is in movement and death in stagnation. So as we celebrate our independence, let us remember the words of Jawaharlal Nehru that says, citizenship consists in the service of our country. With that in mind, I'm going to hand over to our wonderful second years, Kingston and Sarah, who are going to be the hosts for this wonderful celebration. Kingston and Sarah, thank you. Thank you for that wonderful introduction, Ma'am Annabelle. And a very good afternoon to one and all present. And welcome to our first ever Zoom Independence Day celebration. And here's hoping this will be our only Zoom celebration and we get to meet each other really soon. My name is Kingston Bocaro. And my name is Sarah John and we are here to host your day. We begin this day with a smile on our faces and pride in our hearts and remind ourselves of the sacrifice and struggle our ancestors faced when they fought for our freedom decades ago. So I now call two of our first years, Rene Matthews and Benin Monis, who will recall the words from our first Prime Minister, Jawaharlal Nehru. Over to you, Rene. Tryst with Destiny by Jawaharlal Nehru. With the clock striking the midnight hour on 14th, 15th August, 1947, India was to awake to freedom. The assembly to whom power was to be transferred began its sitting at 11 p.m. with Srimati Sucheta Kripalani singing One Day Mataram. It was a historic and memorable occasion in the life of the Constituent Assembly. After an address by the President, Jawaharlal Nehru made his now famous Tryst with Destiny speech. We call, uh, he called upon the members to take a solemn pledge to serve India and her people. Long years ago, we made a tryst with destiny, and now the time comes when we shall redeem our pledge, not wholly or in full measure, but very substantially. At the stroke of the midnight hour, when the world sleeps, India will awake to life and freedom. A moment comes which comes but rarely in the history. Uh, when we stop, when we step out from the old to the new, 
when an age ends and when the soul of a nation long suppressed finds utterance it is fitting that at this solemn moment we take the pledge of dedication to service of india and her people and to the still larger cause of humanity at the dawn of history india started on her unending quest and trackless centuries are filled with her striving and the grandeur of her successes and her failures through good and ill fortune alike she has never lost sight of that quest or forgotten the ideals which gave her strength we end today a period of ill fortune and india discovers herself again the achievement we celebrate today is but a step an opening of opportunity to the greater triumphs and achievements that await us are we brave enough and wise enough to grasp this opportunity and accept the challenge of the future freedom and power bring responsibility the responsibility rests upon this assembly a sovereign body representing the sovereign people of india before the birth of freedom we have endured all the pains of labor and our hearts are heavy with the memory of this sorrow some of those pains continue even now nevertheless the past is over and it is the future that beckons to us now that future is one of ease of resting but of incessant striving so that we might fulfill the pledges we have so often taken and the one we shall take today the service of india means the service of the millions who suffer it means the ending of poverty and ignorance and disease and inequality of opportunity the ambition of the greatest man of our generation has been to wipe every tear from every eye that may be beyond us but as long as there are tears and suffering so long our work will not be over and so we have to labor and to work and work hard to give reality to our dreams those dreams are for india but they are also for the world for all the nations and people are too closely knit together today for any one of them to imagine that it can live apart peace has been said to be indivisible so is freedom so is prosperity now and so and so also is disaster in this one world that can no longer be split into isolated fragments to the people of india whose representatives whose representatives we are we appeal to join us with faith and confidence in this great adventure this is no time for petty and destructive criticism no time for ill will or blaming others we have to build the noble mansion of free india where all her children may dwell i beg to move so that it be resolved that after the last stroke of midnight all members of the constituent assembly present on this occasion do take the following pledge at this solemn moment when the people of india through suffering and sacrifice have secured freedom i a member of the constituent assembly of india do dedicate myself in all humility to the service of india and her people to the end that this ancient land attain a rightful place in the world and make her fulfill and willing contribution to the promotion of world peace and the welfare of mankind members who are not present on this occasion do take the pledge with such verbal signatures as the president may prescribe at the time they next attend a session of the assembly Thank you, Rene and Vinil, for those words that remind us of the night we call ourselves an independent country and what our country stands for. Over to you, Sara. Now, as we move ahead, let's praise and thank our Savior for everything that He has given us by listening to the hymn, "How Great Thou Art." 
sung in different languages of our country requesting melra chef to play the video yes sir thank you Sarah. Thank you, Chef. That was a beautiful portrayal of praising our Almighty God and showing the unity of our country. Thank you. Now, Kingston will handle. Thank you, Sarah. Chef Menroy, can I please request you to put on the PPT? Yes. 
I think this is our 73rd Independence Day, right? Oh no, that was last year. This year, we celebrate 74 years of independence. I'm sorry, I tend to get confused sometimes when it comes to remembering how long our nation has been a free country. I just hope we could celebrate our independence under different circumstances. Even though we are not all present together, we are united as a nation to celebrate what most of our ancestors only dreamed of. Next slide, please. On the eve of 14th August, 1947, Jawaharlal Nehru rose to make a maiden speech in New Delhi. When the world sleeps, India will wake to life and freedom. And right now, our country happens to be one of the largest democracies in the world. And our strength and backbone being unity in diversity. Today, I feel extremely proud of hosting this great day. And words will fall short to describe the sense of joy which I feel. If only I could rewind time to go back to our Independence Day celebration from last year. Hey, wait a minute. This gives me a wonderful idea. Hey, Sarah, let's show our first years what they are missing right now as we bring up some photos from last year's Independence Day celebration. Next slide, please. As you can see, these are some of our memories from last year's Independence Day celebration, where we had everyone dressed up representing different states and festivals. Next slide. We had pairs of students dressed up according to all 29 states who performed their traditional dances as they walked their way towards making a representation of our country's human map. And as the human map was formed, our chief guest, the Sofitel Hoteliers, who also gave us an inspiring motivational session lighten the Samai with our dear animal ma'am and two of the students and enlighten the celebration. Next slide, please. We also had four groups of students representing different festivals, Christmas, Eid, Diwali and Ganesh Chaturthi. They decorated their own stalls according to the theme of their festival and also wore beautiful festive attire. Next slide, please. also showcasing different varieties of festive food in different forms from appetizers to dessert and also its traditional drinks. Next slide. And also practiced and organized various performances like the joyful carol singing by the Christmas team, a dance performance praising Bappa by the Ganesha team, the team Eid sung a beautiful Kavali and an energetic dance performance was done by the team Diwali. This wonderful experience signifies the spirit of secularism, unity and diversity by our college. Now, Kingston would be speaking to us about the current COVID-19 situation faced by our country. Now that we've seen the past, let's hop back to the present. When COVID-19 pandemic first started spreading, let me tell you, some of us were actually relieved to get a 20-day holiday. Little did we know that a 20-day holiday would soon turn into months-long periods of staying indoors and not being able to see one another. This pandemic came to all of us as a shock. We were gutted. We wouldn't be able to see each other on a daily basis. Next slide, please. Soon, all schools and colleges were declared shut as the number of cases were on the rise. 
and all we could do was sit at home and wait out the pandemic as we carried on with our daily lives. The daily rise in number of cases has dropped the citizens of India to its core, yet we stand strong. As a great number of those affected, only few have suffered fatally. Such a great recovery would not be possible without the help of our warriors. Yes, I'm talking about the warriors in the hospitals, working day in and day out to ensure that we have a future. Next slide, please. Our essential workers who provide us with all the groceries for which some of us have very little idea of the hardships that they go through. And for the police who do so well to take care of us and make sure that we follow the rules that have been laid out by the government. To take you further, I now hand over to Sarah. Next slide, please. As we speak about COVID-19, let's not forget our warriors, the actual heroes who fought not just with the virus, but also their families, society, religion, and the citizens selflessly just to keep us protected and take out the virus from our country. When we say heroes, it's not just the medical team or the police officers, but it's also the news reporters who always kept us aware, the drivers who made sure that even in the time of lockdown, the people in emergency reached their destinations. So waste collectors who made sure that the city is clean, the delivery man. We take this moment to thank all these heroes whose help to fight this virus in every way possible. We also thank the families who are willing to endanger their loved one's life to protect our country. But let's not forget the citizens who stayed home and followed each and every rule. We thank these people who not directly but indirectly helped our warriors to keep fighting. Once again, thanking all these brave warriors and hoping to see a better day soon. Over to you, Kingston. Not only to salute our COVID warriors, but also those at the border who are striking back blow for blow every jab they receive from the Chinese military that is invading our borders. I would like to request all of us to stay silent for about 30 seconds as a salute to the soldiers who have lost their lives and the warriors who have sacrificed themselves for the sake of our health protection and well-being. Thank you all for holding your silence. To give you a little more overview of the border situation, I now hand over to Sara. As we salute our fighters whose stories are embedded in our collective consciousness, even today, 73 years after they won us our independence, India's freedom fighters never fail to make us feel proud. The British may have gone, but today's freedom fighters wage a war that is in some way tougher than the one that was fought back then. Our Indian soldiers still fighting at the borders to keep our country safe. Many of our soldiers during a military standoff between India and China over their disputed border have led to the violent clashes that has left at least 20 Indian troops dead. We hope that these lives have been sacrificed for a reason. Let's hope that we can find peace. And by the next Independence Day, we rather than standing behind each other back to attack, let's stand next to each other, holding hands with our neighboring country. With this thought in mind, I would like to request 
to stand up, everybody to stand up while we listen to the national anthem. As we couldn't celebrate our Independence Day watching beautiful performances and eating great food, but nevertheless, we have come up with the best virtual performance showcasing our passion towards food by cooking various meals at home with the theme of tricolor by the second year students, which will be presented and explained by themselves to everyone. Could you please present the PPT, sir? Starting with Xavier Marcus, the dish is Trio Color Taranga Rava Dhokla. Over to you, Xavier. Good morning, everyone. My name is Xavier Marcus, studying in the second year currently. The name of my dish is Trio Color Taranga Rava Dhokla. My recipe belongs to the state of Gujarat. I have only used natural, natural colors. That is for the saffron layer, I have used carrot puree. For the white layer, I have used uh, the vanilla bean flavor of the Greek yogurt. And for the green layer, I have used spinach puree. Uh, so I have, uh, I have chosen this, uh, this dish because few months back I had been to Gujarat for an ODC. So in a restaurant, I had eaten the dhokla, which was way tastier than any other dhokla I have eaten anywhere else. So I thought, let's try it out with uh, rava and with natural food. Color, uh, natural vegetable colors so to match it with the Indian flag. So yeah, here it is. Thank you. That looks really spongy and tasty. Thank you, Xavier. Next. Next, we have Joel Korea explaining his dish, cake sickle with a buttercream frosting. Over to you, Joel.
I guess Joel is not with us right now. Moving on. Next, we have. Yeah. Next slide, please. Next, we have a simple Indian thali by Lisa Korea. Over to you, Lisa. Good afternoon. Am I Hello, am I audible? Yeah, yeah. Good afternoon, ma'am, teachers, and my dear friends. So, my name is Lisa Korea, and I am currently studying in the second year. So, my dish is simple Indian thali. As we all know that India, we have to celebrate the basic food. So I have prepared a simple Indian thali. So the first layer on top is a simple curry. The middle layer is ghee rice and the bottom layer is palak sabzi. So this is a very nutritious Indian meal and it represents the Indian flag and the Indian cuisine. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. That is really a great twist to our Indian thali. Next is also represented by Lisa. Uh, so this is also called as Nariyal Nakru. It is basically coconut uh, laddus which are made. So they are, I made this dish because it is a sign of good luck and hope. So the, uh, the orange flavor is orange flavor. The white is simple flavor coconut and the green one is pistachio flavor. Thank you. That is a really great thought. Thank you so much, Lisa. Moving on. Next, we have a pasta in a makhni sauce by Giselle Bhavi. Do we have Giselle here? I guess she's having a connectivity issue, Sarah. You can move ahead, please. Okay, sir. Thank you. Moving on. The next dish is as well made by Giselle. So if she comes up, we can obviously give her a chance to explain. Next slide, please. Now we have a tricolor China grass jelly, the tricolor pancake with it by Denver Galbano. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, a very good afternoon to one and all. Myself, Denver Galbano, studying in the second year currently. Uh, about the pancakes, it is a sweet dish made on auspicious occasions, uh, specially customized for the Independence Day, thinking about Keeping in mind about the tricolored national flag, it is a crepe rolled and stuffed with uh, sweetened coconut and raisins, raising spirits one bite at a time. Speaking about the China crust jelly, it is a dome of delectable tricolored jelly meant to tease your palate with a hint of citrus and studs of cloves. Thank you very much to one and all. Thank you, Denver. It really looks delicious. Next, we have an East Indian lettery by Sean Galbano. I'm really sorry. We have a really tasty Taranga kebab platter by Raul Daniel. Sorry, uh, my name is Rahul Daniel and I'm uh, currently studying in the second year. Uh, the kebabs have a Mughlai origin and uh, most specifically, uh, they have originated in the kitchens of the Mughal emperors. Uh, in today's time, the kebabs reign from the northern region of India. Uh, on my kebab platter, uh, uh, the Tiranga kebab platter, I have a chicken tikka, a chicken malai kebab and a chicken pahadi kebab. Uh, for all the three kebabs, I have used uh, natural coloring. That is for the chicken tikka. 
टिक्का कबाब आई हैव यूज्ड कश्मीरी रेड चिली पेस्ट फॉर द चिकन मलाई कबाब इट्स गॉट इट्स कलर फ्रॉम द चीज एंड द क्रीम इन इट एंड फॉर द चिकन पहाड़ी कबाब इट्स गॉट इट्स कलर फ्रॉम द कोरियांडर द फ्रेश ग्रीन कोरियांडर दैट आई हैव एडेड टू इट um yeah and yes that that is pretty much it thank you thank you rahul these chickens really look tempting moving on now we have the east indian lettery by shawn galbano good afternoon one and all my name is shawn galbano and i'm currently studying in sy so the dish which i have prepared is known as an east indian lettery which is the delicacy of colorful strands of silken house rice noodles garnished with freshly grated coconut and sweetened with generous coating of jaggery so it is a sweet dish which is mostly made during the weddings and other feasts so the col coloring which i have used is artificial coloring thank you thank you shawn that really looks an, an innovative dish Moving on, we have a trio of idli with coconut chutney by Neeraj Pawar. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Neeraj Pawar from second year. The name of my dish is a uh, trio of idli with coconut chutney. My dish belongs to the Karnataka state, which is from the south of our India. Uh, I have used the artificial color to give a look of our flag in my idli. Uh, so that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Neeraj. Those colors really give a spin to the ordinary idli. Moving on, we have a trio color bread by Jayesh Jadhav. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Jayesh Jadhav from Senior BSc. I have prepared a tri color bread, uh, representing our representing the colors of our national flag. The bread is a normal sandwich bread. But I have used two different colors. There is carrot for orange and coriander for the green color. So instead of just using water for for kneading the dough, I have not particularly focused on any state, but only the colors of the flag. Thank you. Thank you, Jayesh. That really looks lovely. Moving on, we have a trio color. Tamago yaki, which is a special egg roll by Matilda Fernandez. I don't think so. Matilda is here. Okay, I'll move forward. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next. Next slide, please. Now we have a steam modak used with natural colors by Shubham Pawar. Uh, good afternoon, one and all. Uh, so my name is Shubham Pawar, uh, studying in second year currently. So it is a uh, steam modak, which is traditional dish of Maharashtra, uh, which is representing the three colors of our Indian flag. So I use the papaya to give the orange color, while uh, palak for green color. whereas uh, the white color is original color of rice flour so being a maharashtrian i wanted to showcase our tradition traditional dish as well as the ganesh chaturthi is coming soon so i decided to make this dish thank you thank you so much shubham those colors surely gave a great taste to those modak moving on now we have a special mexican pockets by andrea ambros Good afternoon, all. My name is Andrea Ambrose. I'm from the second year batch. The name of my dish is Look Me. It's a Indo-Mexican uh, samosa, a derivative of a samosa. It's from Hyderabad. Uh, I got inspired uh, back when I 
went to Hyderabad. I tasted the starter, and this really inspired me to make this. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. That really looks splendid. Moving on, last but not the least, we have a mint panna cotta on an orange jelly with pissed crumb and an orange and white chocolate shirazi. That's a lot on a plate. Let's hear it from Avlina the cotta. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Avlina. Uh, I'm currently in my second year. The dessert I made, like Sara said, is a mint panna cotta on an orange jelly with a pista crumb and some candied orange slices. So I used orange color for the jelly and um, for the candied orange slices and blue color on the uh, chocolate shards. Uh, a panna cotta is an Italian dish. It's made with cream and milk. And I chose this dish because it, the colors went well with the Indian flag and the elements all tasted good together. Thank you. Thank you, Avlina. That surely looks tempting. Once again, thank you all. That was really an eye-pleasing food variation with the theme of tricolor. And would once again like to appreciate all the second years for their efforts of presenting these lovely dishes. No food can be completed without a drink. So now we have Kingston presenting to us various beverages made by the second years. Every institute or school has their trademark way of celebrating a special occasion. Here at Don Bosco's College of Hospitality Studies, our students love to portray what we do best. So coming up, we have a specially scrutinized list of beverages that have been prepared by some of our institute's finest. And our Kingston, you're on mute. Thank you so much, Anasio. Every institute or school has their trademark way of celebrating a special occasion in their campus at Don Bosco's College of Hospitality Studies. Our students love to portray what we do best. So coming up, we have a specially scrutinized list of beverages that have been prepared by some of our institute's finest, and our students will also give us a short brief about their drinks. Next slide, please. Here we have a carrot and stick mule by Melroy Rodericks. Melroy, are you here? Sorry, sorry, but late. All right, so good afternoon, everyone. First of wishing you all a very happy Independence Day. I'm Elroy Rodriguez from second year B batch. So I've presented here is the carrot and stick mule, which includes carrot juice, apple juice, lime juice, and ginger syrup. Yeah, the addition of carrot juice was a twist as I always wanted to make a vegetable drink for myself. And that allowed me to blend it with the apple Moscow mule, which we had done in the first year event. Thank you. Thank you, Melroy. That sounds refreshing. Moving on. Now we have The Stroke of Midnight by Marshall Mulberry. Over to you, Marshall. Thank you. So, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Marshall Mulberry from second year. The drink which I made is The Stroke of Midnight. Ingredients I've used are kiwi syrup, cream, lychee juice, and mango juice. So as a theme was Indian, the first thing that came to my mind was a tricolor. So I thought of making a tricolor mocktail. So being very careful with the layering, the colors, and of course balancing of all three flavors, I came up with this beautiful mocktail, The Stroke of Midnight. Thank you. Thank you, Marshall. That sounds very wakeful. Next slide, please. Now we have a mint cooler by Sabine Lobo.
I am not sure if Sabine here. Sabine is here. So. Moving on to the next slide. Here we have a magical trio, once again, by Melroy Rodriguez. Hi again. So I have presented here is the magical trio, resembling the magical colors of a very own magical Indian flag. The mint and the lime resembling the green at the base, crushed ice resembling the white, and crushed frozen orange juice resembling the orange at the top. Keeping in mind the three colors of the flag, I wanted to present a mocktail naturally without using any artificial color, which encouraged me to make this mocktail. Thank you. Thank you, Marshall. That sounds excellent. Next slide, please. Here we have the Javan by Savio Gonzalez. Oh, we don't have Savio here at this moment, so I'll be presenting for him. Uh, so the drink that he has presented is the Javan, a drink for all the soldiers out there who every day selflessly fight for a safety and see our flag high with pride. That's the theme he got it up with for the mocktail. On the base, he has used a pomegranate juice indicating the blood of the soldiers who died for the country. In the middle, we have the kiwi juice and a gel to darken the color, indicating the soldiers in camouflage and the flag color too. And on the top, we have an orange soda representing the saffron color of the flag. And in the middle, he stuck a blue caramel lemon representing the Ashoka Chakra. Overall, he's trying to represent here is the life, uh, a special contribution to the Javans out there who is fearlessly fighting for our country. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sara. Now we have the CQ by Kunal Tangal. Thanks, uh, Kingston. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Kunal Tangal. I'm from the second year. And as for my drink, uh, the CQ. So the CQ name comes from the first letter of the three primary ingredients used to compile this drink. So the three primary ingredients are carrot, uh, coconut and cucumber. So the sea cube. And uh, as far as for the inspiration, like in our college, we try and uh, avoid using artificial colors, uh, which Andres uh, always says, like try using natural colors and all. So, and uh, this drink is pretty heavy, I guess. Like I made that for uh, not a drink, but as a uh, smoothie. So, yeah, cheers. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kunal. Moving on. Now we have a logo for Coco by Avelina Di Couto. Uh, I am Avelina Di Couto, and currently I'm in my second year. The drink's name is Coco. And the bottom layer is the lime jelly, and the orange layer is a papaya uh, and lime puree. And the white is a thickened coconut milk, and uh, I topped it with colored soda. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much, Avina. That sounds very palatable. Next slide, please. Now we have a spicy guava mocktail by Joshua Nair. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, Joshua, go ahead. So, warm good afternoon to Animal Ma'am, the faculties, and my dear friend. My name is Joshua Naik, and I'm currently studying in second year. So, as you can see in the screen, the name of my drink is Spicy Guava Mocktail. So, I'm going to just tell you the one line of it, like what exactly a drink is all about. So, so my drink is the reminiscent of flavors of the guava cart of school days. It is made up of guava juice, lemon juice, a bit of chili sauce, uh, sugar syrup and ginger syrup. Thank you. 
Thank you, Joshua. That sounds extremely potent. Now we have A Yellow Summer by Abdul Rahman. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Am I audible? Yes, Abdul. Go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone, again, and happy Independence Day. So, my name is Abdul Rahman Aziz, and I'm in SY right now. My drink's name is A Yellow Summer. And the ingredients that I've used is uh, pineapple juice, orange juice, uh, lime, and honey with a rim of salt and pepper and a garnish with uh, lemon wedges. So the inspiration I had with this drink is uh, actually my mom because uh, we have been in lockdown for like a few months and she was looking flushed. So I wanted to give something that would put a bright smile on her face. So that's, the, that's because of the color. The yellow summer. Thank you. Thank you so much, Abdul. That sounds exotic. Now we have a sparkling raspberry lemonade by Matilda Fernandez. Uh, we'll move on to the next slide since Matilda is not here. Our next drink is a mango sunrise by Lisa Korea. Hello guys. So this drink is called the mango sunrise. So, so this drink is basically inspired by a mango tree. So as you can see here, uh, I have used green which represents the kachi kairi. The yellow represents the uh, ripe mango and I've also used uh, raw mango puree in this drink and you, as you can see the rim is red chili powder like how we eat in our school days kairi with red chili powder so that is that this is my drink thank you thank you Lisa that sounds extremely fizzly and refreshing moving on we have the minty gimbo by Sara John Hello everyone once again. My name is Sara John and I'm from second year. Today I have presented here a minty gimba cocktail mocktail where I have here cucumber which are crushed and the goodness of sweetened simple syrup is used and I have stored some amshul powder to it to top up and top with the lemon juice and soda. So what inspired me for this drink is basically my family because I am a hotel management student, so everyone obviously expects us to keep cooking when we are at home. So due to the whole summer thing, they asked me to cook up something and this is what I made them. Thank you. Thank you, Sara. Next slide, please. Now we have a Get Well Soon Honey by Olisha Quadros. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Olisha Quadros and I'm studying in the second year. This is a hot beverage with the main ingredient being honey and hence the name of the drink is Get Well Soon Honey. The other ingredients used are cinnamon powder, grated ginger and water. You boil it, strain it and you're good to go. This drink is very motivating and I thank the Lord that I came up with this idea because me and my family have been uh, not feeling well for the past two weeks and this drink has helped me to and my family to boost our immunity. It is a very basic drink, yet very close to my heart during this pandemic. Thank you. What a beautiful immunity booster, Olisha. Thank you. Next slide, please. Once again, we have Mr. Menroy Roderick with his drink, a tamarind whiskey sour. Good afternoon, once again. So we are presented with the tamarind whiskey sour, which includes tamarind, lime juice, whiskey, and egg whites. After the mocktail class we had a few weeks ago, Saranjay highlighted some ingredients which we can use to make a drink at home, which I chose tamarind, and I chose tamarind and completely salt drink, which was fun. Thank you. Thank you, Mandroy. Now we have a Cape Cod by Harkirat Singh. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Harkirat Singh, and the name of my drink is Cape Cod. Uh, the ingredients are vodka, uh, cranberry juice, a splash of soda, and a garnish, ga the lime for garnish, and some ice. The name refers to a place in Massachusetts, uh, which is famous for, famous for growing cranberries. 
So I made this drink because uh, I like cranberry flavor, and I think it goes great with vodka. Thank you. Thank you, Harkirat. Moving on. Now we have a pineapple wine by by Raul Daniel. Good afternoon once again. Uh, this is the pineapple wine, or also known as a uh, pineapple peel wine. Uh, the ingredients in it is pretty simple. It's uh, pineapple peel, uh, boiled water which has been cooled and then added to it, uh, sugar, cloves, cinnamon, yeast, and egg white. Um, I've always wanted to try making a wine, and uh, the lockdown gave me uh, the time to do this, and hence I tried making this pineapple wine, and it did turn out very nice. Thank you. Thank you, Rahul. I think I'll be asking you for the recipe later. After looking at all those drinks, it seems like happy hearts have begun. And what a reason to be happy too! Very recently, we at Don Bosco's have welcomed our first years to our institute. Coming up, we have the batch of the Don Bosco College of Hospitality Studies 2020-2023. And what better way to introduce them? Then to see them portray their love for their country. I ask Seth Manroy to present the PPT.
you for that lovely PPT, Chef Madroy, and welcome to all the first years. I now hand over to Sara. Thank you, Kingston. Now we will be having four of our Don Boscoids from each year speaking about what makes them feel proud to be an Indian and speaking out their views. First, I would like to invite Randall Castellino from first year to speak about his views. I would like to begin with a quote from Mark Twain. India has two million gods and worship them all. In religion, all other countries are purple, but India is the only millionaire. A very warm welcome to our respective teachers, students, and my dear friends. My name is Randall Castellino, and I am a first year student. And today I have received an honor of delivering a speech on a topic, what is it to be an Indian? I offer you my greetings on the eve of our 74th Independence Day. This is a happy and emotional day for all our children of Mother India, whether living at home or abroad. We remember with gratitude the countless freedom fighters and revolutionaries who have struggled, thrived, and made heroic sacrifices to win us our freedom from colonial rule. Have you all ever thought, what does it mean to be an Indian? Well, I think being an Indian means being a great part of a great nation that is rising from the atrocities of its past and is leaping into the future with the current superpowers of the world. To not have a national language, but still have a strong sense of cultural unity is what makes us a better human and a better Indian. More than anything, all Indians have a dream that tomorrow is going to be a better day for themselves. This fueled optimism is one of the main key to being an Indian. The most unique quality of India is diversity that is gained through unity, peace, and spirituality. Our country is a place where we simply adjust and adapt, we teach and we learn, we give and we share, we cooperate and we be reasonable. One of the most inspirational poets, Subramanya Bharati, gave voice to our freedom movement and its goals. And I quote, we will learn scripture and science. We will explore both heaven and ocean. We will unravel the mysteries of the moon and we will sweep our streets clean too. And with that, I would love to end my speech by saying, I'm proud to be an Indian and I'm proud to be a part of this DBCHS family. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat. Thank you. Thank you, Randall, for those insightful words and those lovely thoughts. Now, I would like to call upon Lisa Kuria from second year to share her views. Hello. Good afternoon, Annabelle, ma'am, teachers, and all friends present here. So, how many of us know that India is known as the land of spices? Very few of us must be knowing that. So, the colorful vibrant, versatile Indian cuisine has found its place all over the world. Every part of India has its own distinct flavor and tradition. Despite superficial differences, there is a common strand that binds us together. It is the strand of being Indianess and that we all are one. We take pride in celebrating national festivals irrespective of the differences in religion. India is like a rainbow with several hues. Each hue enriches the rainbow. Similarly, it is our diversity that keeps us united and is a unique hallmark of India. Our flag carried with care and coated with pride. Our national flag does not fly because of the wind, but flies with the last breath of the ultimate sacrifices that are made for it. At the end, I would like to quote a small quote with freedom in mind, faith in words, pride in our soul. Let us salute the national flag and Jai Hind. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Those were really a lovely quote. Now we have Rudraksh Carlos from third year sharing his views for our country. I'm Rudraksh Kalose from third year. 
Namaste and good morning and a warm greeting on Independence Day to faculty members, supporting staff, my friends and colleagues. At the outset, I thank our HOD, Ms. Annabel Rodericks, on giving me this opportunity to say a few words on this occasion. Today, we celebrate our 74th year as an independent nation. On this day, August 1947, in the words of our late Prime Minister, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, the soul of our nation, long suppressed, found utterance. India, after the struggle, at the stroke of the midnight hour, when the world slept, India, awake to life and freedom from the shackles of British Raj. As we celebrate Independence Day today, we remise the blood, sweat, toil, turbulence, and triumphs of our great leaders like Mahatma Gandhi, Lokmanya Tilak, Netaji Shubhash Chandra Bose, Shaheed Bhagat Singh, Sukhdev, and Chandrasekhar Azad, and many others, with the words with whose sacrifices and efforts a dream long cherished, which seemed distant, finally turned into a reality. On this day, we pay our homage to these great leaders of our nation. Over the years, India as a country has gained from strength to strength and is forced to reckon with the world has taken notice of India with one of the most progressive growing economy in the world, boasting of GDP growth rates 7%. India today is a moving shoulder to shoulder with other developed countries in the world. India is a country with rich and culture, culture and heritage with citizens of different religions, beliefs, traditions, culture, language, uh, our unite, unity in diversity are the greatest strength in our country when newspaper boy from Rameshwaram became an aerospace scientist and the presid uh, prime, uh, president of a nation, or a normal tea seller from the streets of India became our current prime minister. India is a land of opportunities where every dream can come true if you can hard work, dedication, and will to succeed. Yet, there are many more milestones to be achieved. India will be truly independent when no citizen in India is deprived of basic education. Every citizen of India gets the basic health care and nutrition. Infant mortality drops. Child marriages are stopped. Unemployment is next to zero. There is and there is gender equality. There is a young nation. India is a young nation with more than 65% of our population under the age of 35 years. We, the youth, are the torch bearers of the future, the dreams envisaged by our great leaders and forefathers. We, as the future generation, should keep the fire in our eyes alive and pledge that we shall contribute with all our strength and fortitude to progressive India, which shall be the leader and give direction to the world in every sphere. Last but not the least, today we pay our respects to our armed forces who stay away from their families and make immense sacrifices, whilst guarding our borders to protect from sovereignty of our country. With these few words, I once again extend my greetings to you on Independence Day. Jai Hind. Thank you. Thank you, Rudraksh, for reminding us about our great leaders and soldiers and their great work for our country. And last but not the least, we have Meher D'Souza from our last year batch speaking to us about her views. Uh, firstly, good afternoon, everyone. Am I audible, Sara? Yes, yes, Meher. Uh, so thank you so much for having me here, Annabel, ma'am, Meher, ma'am, and everyone else. It is always a pleasure to be back in college, both virtually and physically. Uh, also, please pardon me if my voice breaks a little. My internet connection is very unstable today. So uh, what is it like being an Indian? To begin with, I'd like to say that being an Indian is a roller coaster ride. It is filled with emotions of love, pride, respect, tolerance, togetherness, etc. Although according to me, being an Indian is about being traditional in your values, yet being modern in your thoughts. It is about being emotional about your country, yet being strong to fight for it. Being an Indian is also about hailing from a particular community, yet celebrating the festivals and the sweets and delicacies of other communities too. Living in an Indian family and being brought up in one 
is about having those traditional homemade remedies for illnesses along with uh, recipes being passed on for generations and generations all together and that is just one thing which shows us how proud we are of our traditional richness and culture i personally feel ecstatic to be living in a time where women can wear the outfit of their choice anywhere yet feel the happiest wearing traditional attires and sarees having said all of this i believe we as a generation should consider ourselves extremely lucky to be able to witness our country traverse its way from being a developing nation to a developed nation in the future despite the innumerable challenges our country faces both internally and externally thus it is very important that this 73rd independence day we keep our freedom in our mind our faith in our hearts and pride in our souls and salute our nation for what it stands for i am proud to be an indian and so should you thank you meher those are some really good thoughts for our country it was really great to hear those deep and insightful statements which i am sure made everyone else also think about their love for the country thank you once again everyone for sharing their views over to you kingston in the spirit of patriotism we now have probably one of the most informative professors sir nixon who will present a video displaying the patriotism of indian citizens and the emotional value we hold for our country could we have the video please yes kingston दादा आप साफ करते रहोगे और लोग कचरा करते रहेंगे अरे कुछ नहीं होगा इस देश का देखा हाँ हो सकता है बस थोड़ी और सफाई करनी पड़ेगी कैसे ये आपका खत आया है किसका है आ, किसी भारत ने भेजा है भारत हमारे गांव में तो कोई भारत है नहीं मैं किसी भारत को नहीं जानती बट लुक शायद कोई पहचान वाला हो सदर प्रणाम शायद आप मुझे पहचानते नहीं हो पर मैं आपको जानता हूं बहुत करीब से कई बार कई जगहों पर हम मिल भी चुके हैं और हर मुलाकात एक याद बनती गई याद है जब वह मिश्रा की बीवी जो तो उसे कूड़ा फेंक रही थी तब आप ही ने तो उसे डांटा था गांधी चौराहे के सामने वाली दीवार पर जब आदमी थूक रहा था तब आप ही ने तो उसे रोका था किसी दूसरे ने फेंका हुआ कचरा जब आपने उठाकर कचरे के डिब्बे में डाला था ना तब मुझे बड़ा गर्व महसूस हुआ था कि आज का नौजवान भी मेरी इतनी कदर करता है आपके बहुत ऐसा नहीं मुझ पर नहीं तो बोला कौन सोचता है इन छोटी छोटी बातों के बारे में मैं शुक्रगुजार हूँ आपका मेरी इतनी इज्जत करने के लिए मैं शुक्रगुजार हूँ मेरी तरक्की के खातिर आपके इस छोटे कदम के लिए मैं शुक्रगुजार हूँ मुझे महान बनाने के लिए आपका प्रिय भारत सच बात बताओ मोहन दादा मतलब मुझे नहीं लगता कि इतनी आसानी से मुबारक हो मोहन दादा अरे अपना दिल साफ हो रहा है हाँ पर और एक खत देना बाकी है अब कौन ये आपका खत आया है किसी भारत ने भेजा है Thank you for that wonderful video, Chef Melroy. I would now like to ask 
if Sir Nixon would like to share his views for with us about the video. Hi, good afternoon, one and all. A uh, happy Independence Day to each one of you. I was going through a lot of videos the other day, but this was something that touched me so very well. It is just hardly two minutes, but then it gives us an insight of how things can be changed by our simple actions. You know, it's a different thing that we go around carrying flags for one day, we put it on our cars, we put it on our bikes, and we are great showing all the patriotic things. We put it on our uh, DPs, on our mobile phones and all that. And then the next day, if you go out in the morning, you will find that all the flags are lying on the street. So where exactly is the respect and all that? You know, so rather doing than that, you do something which is clear and which is nearly dear to your heart. You know, try to inculcate good values. Try to do your little bit. The other day I was talking with uh, Susan Ma'am and we were discussing because we used to have a very old colleague of ours um, and the way she used to scold literally people when we used to travel in the train, when they used to litter in the compartment. You know, she used to have a packet or a brown plastic bag and she used to insist that they used to put the waste into that packet so that she can dispose it of, you know. And that's the kind of spirit because it just starts off with one person, but when everyone joins in, then we can truly make something which is great. And that's the only message that I can leave you guys. We are in a beautiful country where we are allowed to express all our views. We can practice various different religions. We really do not know how lucky we are for being out here because there are so many other places where we have worked in many other countries also. And we know how difficult it can be. And there are things that we take it for granted, but you know, please respect your country and make it proud. That's the only thing I can say. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sir Nixon, for that immensely insightful video and helping us remember what we need to do to make sure our nation stays on the top. I now hand over to Sarah. Thank you, Kingston. Now, as we come to the end of our Independence Day celebration, I would like to call our dear Annabel Ma'am to address the staff and students. Over to you, Ma'am. Thank you, Sarah, very much. Uh, can you, I guess you can hear me, right? Wonderful. I, I am so blessed and happy to see this wonderful presentation that was curated by Kingston and Sarah, along with Roma Ma'am and Melroy Chef. I want to thank you all for making sure that it comes together along with Alenka Ma'am, the entire food production department, because those uh, uh, beautiful dishes that are obviously making everyone hungry right now uh, were selected and put together by the entire food production department. Andre Sir, Nixon Sir, with all the drinks. I'd like to thank Nixon Sir for that wonderful uh, PPT. To uh, honestly, Melroy Chef and Rajaram, who are making sure that this is streaming continuously, to Raul and Justin, who are co hosting also, as far as making sure that we don't drop our connectivity. I was completely and absolutely impressed with Randall, Lisa, Rudraksh, and Meher. You know, when I listen to all of you, I am absolutely convinced that the next generation of India is going is in good hands, really good hands. And it's also going to be in really tasty hands with wonderful service. And I look at all the first years. I am so blessed that you chose us to be a part of your journey for the next three years. Uh, all I would like to say is Keep that momentum to the third year. Make sure it doesn't die out. We don't get into any uh, stagnation like the chakra. It has to be movement and only movement upwards. You know, there is a saying that says, don't ask what your country 
can do for you. Ask yourself what you can do for your country. So today, as we spend the day thinking about our country, think about what you can do to contribute. By being a good student, by being a good child, by being a good brother, by being a good sister, aunt, teacher, mentor, guide, but make sure that you give off your best all the time. So happy Independence Day and happy feast. Jai Hind. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye, ma'am. Uh, as we have our lunch, please remember all the farmers that toiled to make sure that your food got to your table and all that prepared the food that you are about to eat for lunch. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, <coughs> Chef Melroy. Over Thank to you. you ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you everyone. Thank Have you, a wonderful, Thank wonderful you, day. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. 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 Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.